Bill Kenobi. Years ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars. Now he begs you to help him in his struggle against the Empire. I regret that I am unable to present my father's request to you in person, but my ship has fallen under attack, and I'm afraid my mission to bring you to Alderaan has failed. I have placed information vital to the survival of the Rebellion into the memory systems of this R2 unit. My father will know how to retrieve it. You must see this droid safely delivered to him on Alderaan. This is our most desperate hour. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. So this is the project I'll be going over in this tutorial today. The video might look a little off, but that's only because of the way it's being recorded. So first we'll start off by right-clicking in our scene and adding a new game object. And we'll call it hologram. And then we're going to want to zero out the position. And then next we will add a box collider to the hologram. And this box collider we're going to want to scale to be 0.2. 0.2 and 0.2. Next we'll add two scripts, one object manipulator and the other near interaction grabbable. Both of these scripts come with MRTK and this allows you to grab this box collider and move it around using the HoloLens. Next we will add a button to our scene. So just type in button into assets and then just find the first button or any button that you'd like and we will change the Z position to be 0.1 and the scale to be 0 0.22, 0 0.22, and 0.22. And then now you can see the button in the scene. And we're going to want to change the label of the button to say play or whatever you'd like. OK, now I'll just clean up the hierarchy. And then going into our prefabs, we're going to take the cone prefab and drag it into our scene. And then we're going to want to zero out the position. Then we're going to want to rotate it around the X by 90 degrees. And then scale it to 0 0.035, 0 0.2, and 0.155. Now looking at your scene, you can see that the projection of the hologram is coming together and the button will be placed wherever the R2-D2 projector is so that it looks like this hologram is coming out of the R2-D2's projector. So next what we'll do is create another game object and we're going to call this video and then we're going to want to zero out the video and change the Z to be negative 0.12. We're also going to want to scale it down to 0.22 for the X, 0.22 for the Y, and 0.22 for the Z. Next, we're going to add a mesh filter. And for this mesh filter, we'll, we'll add a quad. Then we'll add a mesh renderer. And then we'll add a video player. Go into the videos folder, you'll see we have this green screened Leia video. And we're going to key out the green color, make it transparent to make it look like it's just the Leia video. So drag this video into the video player. And now we'll make the shader. Now go to your shader folder. And in your shader folder, you're going to write, want to right click, click create go down to rendering and then hit universal render pipeline and then pipeline asset. Then you're going to want to press enter. And then go up to edit and hit project settings. And then go to graphics. And in graphics, for scriptable render pipeline settings, add that universal render pipeline asset. Then exit. Now, if you don't have any of these options, what you want to do is go up to Window, and then hit Package Manager. And here, you should make sure that you have the universal render pipeline installed. And if you don't, download that, because this will allow us to use shader graphs. Next, in our shader folder, we're going to right-click 
and then create shader and go to universal render pipeline and click unlit shader graph then we're going to call it green key and then you want to open that up then click fragment and in your graph inspector go to graph settings and change the surface from opaque to transparent this will add an alpha channel to our fragment shader then we're going to go to our green key properties and add a texture 2d property and drag that into our graph then right click in the graph and add a sample texture 2d this will take in our video as a sample texture and then connect those two things then we're going to create another node called vector 3 and connect the RGB to the vector 3. Then we're going to take the output of the vector 3 and input that to the base color of the fragment shader. Next we're going to right click and add a color mask and connect the output of the vector 3 into the input of the color mask. So in the properties we're going to add color and call it key color and in the node settings for key color we're gonna make the default color to be green for right now obviously to key out the green of the layer video drag that into the shader graph and connect it to the color of the color mask now add a float and we'll call this float threshold and the threshold default value will be 0.4. Drag that in, connect it. And lastly, we'll add another float value called fuzziness. And the fuzziness default value will be 0.1. Drag that in and connect it to the input of the color mask. So if we just connect the output of this color mask to the input of the alpha and the fragment shader, it'll turn anything that's green, that's not green, into transparent. But we don't want that. So what we're going to do is right click and create a new node called invert colors. And then connect the output of the color mask to the input. Check this red box and then take that output and put it into the input of the alpha. Now anything that is green will be turned transparent from this alpha input. Now save that asset and go back to your shader folder and right click and create and add a material. And then call this material green key. Now at the top at shader, click into it and type in green key and add the shader graph that we created. And you should see those settings. Now go to video and in the mesh renderer material add this green key material. Then go to the material property of the video player and it looks like we actually need to um, go back to our shader graph and in the properties go to texture 2D and change the reference to underscore base map. This is just so it's easier to find. And don't forget to save the asset and then change the material property to base map. Now it'll use our shader. So if we go to our scene and press play, we should see the Leia video with the green screen keyed out. If you go to our material, we can change what color is being keyed out. And so just find whatever color works with your green screen and kind of use that. You can also see that the threshold can change how much is being filtered. And so I found about 0.4 works fine. Now for the projection of the hologram with this cone shape, I use this great tutorial by Brackies, which I'll put in the description of this video, where it kind of shows you how to do this great shader to make something look like a hologram. Now if I go to the material itself, you can kind of see what the shader looks like. It kind of uses this line picture to make it look like it's a hologram. And so I add this projection material to my cone and it'll look something like that.
Now we can actually move the video back to uh, point 0.1 and then press play and this is what it will look like now. But as you can see as I go around the hologram it stays in one place and being a 2D video it kind of takes away from the experience. So what we're going to do is go to our scripts folder, right click and create a new script and call it head follower and then open that up and we can take away the start function all we'll need is the update and in the update function you're going to take the game object transform and take the Euler angles and set that equal to a new vector 3 and this vector 3 we're gonna lock the x-axis rotate the y-axis based off the position of the HoloLens camera and then lock the Z position save that we'll go back to our scene and go to video and then add component and then add that script so now when we press play as you move your head around the hologram should follow you so it looks pretty much 3D the whole time now we're going to want to create another script called video controller this is to control the playing of the video using the button. So click on that. And what we'll first want to do is type at the top using Unity Engine dot video. And then we're going to have four inputs. One will be a uh, video player object called video player. The next will be the cone. The next one will be the video object. And the last one will be the button object. Now we can delete this update function and instead create a public play function to play our video. And when we hit the button to press play, we're going to want to hide the button, so we're going to set it to not active and then we're going to want to show the cone and then we're going to want to show the video object and lastly we're going to want to play the video Then we're going to want to have an event called for every time the video is done. So we'll create a function called nReached. And that'll take the input of an event. Type unityengine.video.videoplayer and then vp. And when this function is triggered, we're going to want to set the cone to false set the video to false and then reshow our button then in our start function we're going to want to add the event caller so we'll do video player dot loop point reached and then we'll add the end reached function save that and go back to our scene and go to hologram and add the video controller. Now take the video and add that to video player, the cone to cone, the video to video, and the button to button. Now we're going to want to deactivate the cone object and also the video object and then in the video player we're going to want to take off play on awake.
Now let's go to the button and go to the events, the on-click events, and add the hologram to that with the video controller. And under video controller, put the function play. Now take these three objects and make the hologram their parent by dragging them in. So now you can grab that box collider and move around all the objects at the same time. So playing our scene, you can see that we have the play button in thin air. And if you grab the object, you can move it around. Now if you press play, the hologram should show up and the video should play. And if you grab that button and move it to where the projector of the R2-D2 is, it'll look like it's projecting out of the R2-D2 when you press play. One issue I did come across was that when I did this shader stuff, it ruined all of the materials of the MRTK. I'm not really sure how to fix that, but that's just one thing to note while doing this. Alright, that's all.